I, I'm not sure what I've learned because I've always tried to, uh, because I've written some plays myself, some plays for radio and, and the stage. Uh, and uh, what I've, because I've always tried to, because I've, I've, I've been, I think, uh, I've been a devoted reader of him since I was uh, like 15 years old or something. And, and I've always tried to avoid what he has done mm -hmm. because it's so distinctive. It's so, you can, you're never in any doubt that this is, uh, if you read his text, that this is, how a printer, and this is so uh, notice, noticeable. Uh, but uh, I, some, I don't know, it's, I hope I have learned that uh, to not, <coughs> not say too much, uh, like uh, try to have something hidden behind, behind the words. Uh, and probably a lot, lot of his, uh, his humor, a very subtle uh, humor, uh, mm -hmm. I think maybe I have learned something for that. Mm -hmm. The, 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 I mean, the more and more I, I hear of your work and think back to his, uh, there's that rich set of connections there. Um, uh, I also wanted to raise another Nobel Prize winner, um, which is the, the Icelandic author, Hador Laxness. Um, and and I, I think many of us have been following the, the comments of the, the chair of the Nobel Prize Committee. Um, and uh, I think that tonight's event is, is proof that America is interested in, in uh, writers from other communities uh, and, and the work that Open Letter is doing. Um, but so, so I sort of wondered if you would um, maybe give us, uh, some people who may not have read Howdor Laxness's wonderful novels, a, a sense of uh, how important you think of him as, as a writer, in maybe to you or to possibly to America. Um. Mm. <clears throat> well, it probably to me, he's uh, maybe in the, and me and other people of my generation. Uh, we uh, we have been trying to uh, keep him as far as far away from us uh, as an influence as we possibly can, like, uh, like because he he has been like a the, uh, the looming do you say looming right, yeah. Seattle of Icelandic literature for uh, more than half a century uh, because uh, he was like a, he was uh, uh, because in when he started writing fiction it was in the nineteen twenties. Fiction was not actually the thing for Icelandic writers. They were more like uh, they were more into poetry and and playwriting as well. Uh, but he like uh, he when he was very young he started going abroad. He went to Europe and and even to America. He went to Hollywood. He wanted to be a uh, to write movies, uh, screenplays. But he uh, he was very quick to find out that America was not for him because he had this. Uh, he had in, in deep deep inside, he was a socialist, and he was, he was a socialist, and and uh, and uh, I think he just uh, he brought something to Icelandic culture, something uh, distinguished and refined, and, and something modern that uh, we were not used to. And so, uh, and just because of his uh, incredible ability of, of writing, he's, uh, he's a he's a he's a great stylist, and, and so he had just very. In his uh, second or third novel, he he just did something that Icelanders had never witnessed uh, in in their own culture, and, and he soon became like the conscience of the of the country of the country. Of the, had a great in, impact or influence on, on on everything, not just literature and the arts, but uh, also he told the Icelanders they had to uh, wash themselves better. You are dirty. You you have to, you have to eat better food and then. And uh, he, he became very, very influential, and he was like a uh, old uh, until nineteen seventies probably. And there's been something of a move away from from that for writers, at least um, in Iceland since then. Trying to, I mean, Harold Bloom has this phrase: the anxiety of influence. And it sounds sounds yeah, yeah, like contemporary yeah, Icelandic writers yeah. are moving away from. It. Yeah, because I mean, uh, the the Icelandic novelists that came, uh, even the Icelandic modernist novelists uh, that. Uh, like came on the scene in the 1950s, 1960s. They were heavily influenced by Halldór Laxness, and they could never actually come up to the surface because of Halldór Laxness. He was like a, a great author, and, and so it was a. I, I wouldn't have liked to uh, live started my writing career in that time because it was like uh, I would have get gotten uh, like a, lost in his in his shadow. Right. Um. Yeah, I, I think he's such a powerful figure that that's difficult to avoid. Um, um, but then, uh, but then there's one. It's very interesting that he was uh, his his uh, one of his major novels, uh, 
probably the novel he was mostly talked about. It's called the Independent People. It was published in the United States in 1940s, uh, and it, and it was chosen the book of the month. Uh, and it and it sold like 500,000 copies, uh, but uh, at that time he had started like uh, he, he had started uh, uh, getting very friendly with the uh, the Soviet Soviet Union and uh, some influential people there, and so uh, the American uh, well it's, uh, uh, the American police or, or, or CIA I mean CIA was I mean they were at that time weren't they. Right. Yes. Yeah. 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 So it's like a, they sort of like a managed to wipe him off the surface. He just disappeared in America. I hear, and I hear that there are there is somebody trying to get the FBI files on. Hubble yeah. Yeah. FBI, yeah. Yeah. Release. Yeah, they're still trying to. Yeah. Okay. So still an uh, an American uh, American uh, writer or or, or write, uh, literature professor who was trying to to get this into the open uh, and. And the um, the Icelandic uh, politicians haven't been very helpful because they it's uh, because the, Isl uh, the Icelandic politicians at this time they helped the uh, FBI people. <laughs> okay. They they had the grudge towards Halldór uh, Laxness uh, because he was the he was a uh, some sort of a unfair Right. Yeah. Quite the troublemaker. Yeah, troublemaker. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh, we, we're going to open up to to the audience for some questions. I just have one more of my own. Um, before we do that, um, and, and it's a question that, that begins with uh, a quote from another of your stories, a story called The Protagonists. Um, I think it's a wonderful quote. Uh, it, it, the quote is, dying is not the worst thing, not necessarily. Financial chaos, for instance, is a much more serious thing because you can't bury it in the ground. Um, and that's again translated by Vera Ulysdotte. Um, and obviously, I don't want to bring up a sore point because uh, many people in, in Iceland are suffering financially at the moment, as on Main Street America. But it does raise the question uh, and get us back to the sense of, of hidden meaning in your works. And I'm struck by the, the foresight of, of that writing, which was a story from several years back. Um, and so one thing I found in, in The Pets is, is, is that I think it is deeply political, even when it is deeply personal. Uh, and I wonder if you see yourself as a political writer or would feel happy about being described as, as a political writer in some way? No, not, not being described as a... No, because I don't think I, I am not a political writer, no. But, uh, I, mean, I mean, you can... you can If you find something political in this, this story, you just... Uh, I must congratulate you on that. <laughs> like, uh, but, uh, I mean, you can always find, uh, like, uh, interpret things I mean, almost every way you like. I mean, uh, so. But, uh, but yeah, probably. I mean, I would be happy to uh, if 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 you could interpret my some of my stories as politically. Uh, uh, but I I I wouldn't like to be uh, to be called a political writer. Let's say. But then again, to Harold Pinter, he he's like a he's a very political person. He's uh, uh, in 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 the in many people's view, he's 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 too. Uh, Open about his political views, uh, and he is uh, he's probably not too popular among, at least not American Republicans. Uh, he <laughs> said some very bad things about. He's probably said the, the worst things uh, uh, about George Bush I've ever heard. Uh, and now he is, I mean, he is a very political person, but his plays. Uh, uh, when he started to write in, in the in the eighties, he started to write. Plays that were uh, like openly uh, uh, political, and that's where he started to like fail, I think, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, in his earlier plays, uh, the, the, in his, his earlier plays were very easy to interpret as uh, with some political tension or uh, all kinds of sexual politics or, or just world politics, uh, but but that was never the uh, the main thing about them. Mm -hmm. I think that, in a sense, takes us back to something Chad was, was saying from Kirkus Reviews in the introduction, is that we, I think we could compare your, your work to Kafka, fruitfully, because there is that sense, of, as with Pinter, of political tension, but not partisan politics, not political agenda. 